Hey there friends, what's going on? It's Kodiak here, back for another Assassin's Creed Valhalla video, and you better believe today we are talking about armor. We're back with another tier list video, and of course, we couldn't leave armor. We have to talk about armor because it is probably the most important thing that you will get in Assassin's Creed. Now I know everybody loves weapons, weapons are flashy, weapons are cool, but it usually comes down to the armor to help determine play style and really round out a character and give you the buffs necessary to push into the end game. And I'm not gonna lie, I had a very hard time ranking this stuff. I had to rethink some things. I took all the comments from the melee weapon video and the ranged weapon video and I really tried to soak it in, let it all kind of settle because you guys had some really good points. You had some really great insight onto how I ranked things. So I really wanted to do this one right. It may be a little bit more boring because look, there's a lot of armor sets to talk about. There's no categories here. We're not really gonna talk about light, medium, and heavy because that's not really a thing in this game. Um, although it is based on weight, but we're, we're not really gonna dive into that. We are gonna talk about every set of gear because I think each piece of gear deserves their time to shine. And while not all of them are great, I do think it's good to have a thoughtful discussion about why each set of gear got the ranking that it got. But as always guys, this is just my opinions. After about 120 hours in the game, I've got a lot of thoughts. I think I have a decent head on my shoulders when it comes to this stuff, but yes, just my opinions. If you disagree, that's okay. Leave it in the comments section below. Let's talk about it. I do my best to respond to as many comments as I can, but without further delay, let's dive in and let's talk about the armor. Now remember guys, each set of armor has a two-piece bonus and a five-piece bonus. We're gonna start with the F tier, the worst sets of gear in my opinion, and of course I'm talking about the Berserker set, the Huda Folk set, and the Magister set, all three of which I think are really just terrible. And I'll start with the Magister set because it's really the easiest one to break down. Increase melee damage at night. Why? What is the point of this? I get it. If you're at night, if you want to just constantly fast forward, you get that flat plus 15 melee damage, but that is just so niche and unnecessary. You can meditate, you can get there as much as you want, just stay nighttime all the time. I guess that's the way it was intended to be played, but at the end of the day, this is just kind of a nuisance more than anything else. Yes, that's a nice damage buff, plus 15 to melee damage flat at night is decent, but there are just better sets of gear out there. The Huda Folk set is just as niche in my opinion, increases your attack after an assassination. This stacks up to five times and you get an additional increase to speed and armor with the five piece. Now really think about this one. You're gonna assassinate somebody, then go into combat, and you're gonna get a couple buffs, but you're not really going to get the full benefit of it. So you're not going to attack somebody, assassinate them, then go into big combat, then go back to assassinating, then go back into big combat. It just, it's a really jerk stop start kind of buff system that we're talking about here with this set. And honestly, even if the duration was five minutes long, which I know it isn't, I'm not gonna buy this. I would, ref I refuse to buy this set of armor because it's just not that good. So why would I waste my money on a set that really isn't going to benefit me? Even as an assassination player, you're not gonna see a lot of benefits from this set of gear. Assassination into full-blown attacking, back to assassination, it's just really strange. And maybe that's somebody's play style, but I think for the vast majority of us, it isn't. All right, this next one, the Berserker set, is one that honestly I thought was a lot better, but after reading it and really diving into it, I think it may be bugged. Um, at least that's what the tooltip suggests. You get increased speed when taking damage. This stacks for five times, and you get a 40 second duration. But the speed bonus of those five stacks goes from 2.5 to 2.5. And the same thing with the five piece bonuses here. You get plus two, plus two to attack, and plus 2.5, plus 2.5 to armor. Doesn't make sense. I'm pretty sure it's bugged. Maybe it's a tooltip thing. But even still, it's not that great of an effect. Sure, you're gonna get a little bit of speed, you're gonna get a little bit of armor and attack. We have no idea where the high-end range of that is. Maybe it would bump up to like a C if I actually knew and things weren't bugged, but let's be honest here, it's Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We are kind of dealing with bugs left and right. It's just the world that we live in. It's a decent set, but in its current buggy state, it's bottom of the barrel. All right, next up we have the D tier items, and these are really not much better than the F tier items just very niche across the board. The Huntsman armor, which increases your range damage when hitting enemies further away than 20 meters. I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to give you a straightforward ranged approach to the game. It works for the most part, but here's the deal. You really don't need that much extra damage if you're upgrading your weapons and hitting headshots and using something like a hunter bow or a predator bow. What is that extra damage doing for you in combat? Really nothing because you're just gonna be getting headshots. Now I think the way the Huntsman armor is supposed to work 
Is it supposed to be for a player that likes to be in melee, but also use their bow in melee? Maybe a light bow player? It's okay, but again, it's niche, and the thing is, you need to be further away than 20 meters. So it really just is working against itself the entire time. And even with the additional bonus here, the five piece of increasing your speed, okay, what's the point of increasing your speed even more? When again, you're further away than 20 meters, you're constantly having to deal with that. Are you using a hunter bow and trying to be stealthy? Because you're pretty much just going to get headshots every time. Same thing with the predator bow. It's a really strange kind of relationship between the armor and the play style in the game. Almost as if they didn't really understand how this set of armor was meant to be used. And that's kind of how it's designed. It's not quite right. It doesn't fit any of the puzzle pieces here. And that's why it gets a D tier. The Hidden One set is another one of those strains assassination sets. Increase assassination damage when crouched and undetected for 10 seconds. It's got a 10 second duration or kicks off when you get detected. You get that plus 25 to assassination damage. And of course you get an additional increase to headshot damage plus 25 uh, for the five piece there. And that's okay. Look, that's a fine set if you're an assassin and that's all you do. And you just want to play the entire game as an assassin. I'm sure there are some people out there that really enjoy that. Getting a little bit more assassination damage is great, but honestly, it becomes a moot point once you get the advanced assassination talent in the Raven Tree. So again, it's really more of a kind of a vibe thing. If you want to vibe with the hidden ones, you want to pretend full bore that you're an assassin. Perfect. There's your set of gear. All right, this next one, I think it's pronounced Galaglash Armor, increases your melee resistance when hitting enemies with finishers. That's a five stacker, gives you a 45 second duration, plus three to plus 15 melee resistance. Sure. It's fine. It gives you more resistance in combat. Resistance is good. With the five piece, you get plus 1.1 1 .1 to plus 15. Not bad, but I just think there are better sets of gear out there. Finishers are not always the easiest thing to do, and that's really why I don't give this one a higher rank. If this was more of a straight damage buff all the time, easier to activate, I would think it would rank higher. But because it all hinges on those finishers, which are not the easiest things to execute on a consistent basis, I think it really does remain in the D tier for me. It's an okay set of gear, but there are just so many better ones out there. Moving right along to the C tier, and this is where I know I am going to get some flack in the comments. I'll just get it out of the way right off the bat. Thor's armor, C tier set of armor, in my opinion. It all depends on the stun. It's all about Thor's hammer using Mjolnir, using high stun weapons, and I get it. Increases your speed when stunning an enemy. You get four stacks of this, duration 30 seconds, and you get just a little bit of boost to your speed. Again, I think I had a buggy tool tip here. I would imagine this goes from plus 2.5 to around plus 15. That's fine, it's decent, it's not bad. The five piece increasing your stun by an additional plus 10, it's good. But here's the thing, you have to be using it in a very specific set of gear. You cannot mix and match things. If you're going with low stun items and you're wearing Thor's set of armor, it just doesn't make sense. It's all about having an additional stun. You can rune out your weapons to have a ton of stun, that's fine, but the thing is, it's designed to be used with Mjolnir. That's just the way they designed this set of armor. It's a legendary set of armor. You pretty much get it at the end of the game once you get everything done. So at that point, it's kind of a moot point. Uh, it's just kind of weird. And, and I really always hate these sets of gear that are so dependent on one very particular thing, like a specific weapon. And that's exactly what the Thor's armor is doing. No hate. I'm sorry if you guys love this set of armor. It is a cool set of armor. I love it. But at the same time, it's just not that great. All right, next is our trusty Raven Clan armor. Increases armor the lower the health you have. 75%, 50%, and 25% are your health thresholds. That gets up to plus 25, and that's okay. Look, armor's good, and you get a little bit of crit chance when you're lower health, and I think that's a really good set of armor for beginning players. I think that's why they give it to you first. They make you find it first, kind of. Uh, because it works really well to ease players into the game. If they're losing health a lot, they're going to gain armor, they're going to gain that crit chance, and I think that is a fantastic thing to do for new players. For most advanced players, once you get to the mid-game, it's kind of pointless. You're never going to really be below 50% if you're a decent player, and what's the point of that? You're not going to get the buffs, you're not going to get the benefits, so it's kind of a moot point. All right, this last one, and I know I touted this one in our Hell's Damnation video, Ultimately, the Hell's Damnation armor is not great. Increase your armor when your weapon is ignited. You get plus 15 armor and the five piece restores some health on hit. When your weapon is ignited, you get 2% back per hit. That is a very cool defensive utility set of gear, but in terms of progression and really pushing the content, I'm not sure how great it is. I know I touted it in the video when we're talking about Suitor Sword, the entire kit 
it is very good. It's super easy to ignite your weapon in this game, especially once you unlock that fire ability. But ultimately, this set of gear is not going to really get you where you want to be. It's not going to have you doing all of those cool flashy finishers. And there's just nothing here that increases your potency on the battlefield. It just means that you can stay out on the battlefield longer. And that's fine, but that just kind of makes it a C tier item, in my opinion. You may hate me for that one too. Again, that's a store item, so I don't feel bad kind of shitting on it because let's be honest, we paid a lot of money for this game. They released a lot of armor sets that are good, that are paid. So, you know, maybe save your money on this one. All right, you want to talk about niche items? Let's talk about the B tier. Three sets, all specialty items, all hidden behind either the store or Amazon Prime, the Carolidian set, the Draugr set, and the Valkyrie set. We're gonna start with the Carolidian because I love this set of gear. I think this is a true step up from the Raven Clan armor. At low health, getting hit temporarily increases your armor, and at high health, getting hit temporarily increases your attack. Across the board, I think this set of gear is decent as well. When you're below 50%, you get hit, you're gonna get a 10 second buff, that's gonna give you plus 10 armor every time. Sad thing is, that's on a 60 second cooldown. I wish that was a 30 or a 20 second cooldown. Would have made it even better. And at high health with the five piece, getting hit temporarily increases your attack. Now, of course, that's only a 15% chance. You're still getting a 10 second buff and you're gonna get plus 10 attack, but there is only a 15% chance. Now, the real reason this set of gear is in the B tier is because it's completely free for anybody that has Amazon Prime. You can even sign up for a trial and get this, but I don't know how much longer it's gonna last. They're pushing it on the main page when you load up Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so just get this set of armor. You have nothing to lose. Somebody that you know has Amazon Prime, steal their login, get the Twitch stuff. Boom, set of good gear, it's a B tier, mainly because of the effects, plus that little twist that it's completely free and easy to get. All right, the Draugr set kind of falls into that Thor's category as well. Increases your attack when hitting a poisoned enemy, that's the two piece, and increases your speed and stun additionally with the five piece. Now, of course, the Draugr set is meant to be used with the Mournful Cry. That's a weapon we talked about in the melee video. Your crits have a chance to poison your weapon. And of course, if your weapon is poison, you're gonna be able to do additional damage because of the buff you're getting. So it is niche in the fact that you have to kind of build a certain way. There is, of course, a poison ability, both ranged and melee that you can use as well. So it is easy to get that additional increase to attack and the additional increase to speed and stun if you're using the five piece. And I think that's really good. Look, straight attack is a good thing. So definitely a B tier item in my opinion. Now, honestly, I feel kind of the same about the Valkyrie armor. Increases your speed after a dive of the Valkyries. That's the ability, of course. And you get an additional increase to armor and attack with the five piece. That's a really good set of gear. Dive of the Valkyrie is one of the best abilities in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I used it throughout my entire progression. I didn't buy either the Draugr or the Valkyrie sets of gear because honestly, I'm just kind of sick of spending all of my money, but I know how to break down a set bonus. It's pretty straightforward. And I think that's a really good set of gear. I use Dive of the Valkyries a lot. I would have seen a lot of benefits from this set of gear, but honestly, it's not an A tier. It's not an S tier. It's a B tier. Both of these sets are, all three of them are really, because they're good, but they're niche. And that's really the kicker here. That's the reason why all three of these items are in the B tier. Good sets of armor. If you want to spend the money or do the Amazon Prime thing, I'm not going to stop you, but I think there's better stuff out there. All right, let's move on to the A tier, and I want to start with the Modronit set. This was the set of gear that you could get from the Yule Festival. I think at this point, with the Yule Festival being over, the only way you're going to get this is through Retta. They may have taken it out of the game completely. Uh, I'm sorry that I have to bring it up, but it's a really good set of gear. It increases your attack after a stun finished kill. You're going to get a 10 second buff, but the increase is plus 25 to your attack. That is huge. And the additional increase to stun is plus 35. So we're talking about stun finisher kills. Of course, you actually have to do them to get the benefit. But the reason this is in the A tier is because it was easy to get. And those benefits were really good. Plus 25, plus 35. We haven't seen numbers like that across any of the armor pieces we've talked about in the game. It's just a really solid set of gear. This is an early to mid game set of gear that can propel you into the late game. And I promise you guys, you're going to be doing a lot of stun finishers, especially if you're a parry style player. If you're not a parry style player, you might not get as much use out of this set of gear. But if you are a parry style player, you're going to really love what the Modronit set brings to the table. Now, the other set is, of course, the Brigandine set. Increases your armor when surrounded by two enemies or more. You're also going to get an additional increase to melee damage with the five piece and we're talking about serious buffs again plus 10 plus 20 plus 30 armor and then additional increases to that melee damage plus 2.4 plus 7.3 
plus 25. That is a fantastic set of gear for anyone progressing through the game because you're going to be doing a lot of these castle sieges and large scale combat maneuvers where you're going to be surrounded by guys all the time. Now, if you're at the end game, this set of gear kind of loses its luster, but again, it's all about that mid-game progression. If you don't have it and you're in the middle of the game, get the Brigandine armor, you will see a ton of use out of it. It's a very valuable set of gear, completely free in the game, you just gotta go find it. All right, my friends, we have arrived at the S tier, the best of the best, the cream always rises to the top. And we gotta start with the Thane set of gear, increases your critical chance when parrying. This is gonna give you a plus 10 when you parry. You're gonna get an additional increase to crit damage, plus 20 with the five piece, and that's just great. Look, if you're a parry player, this is your bread and butter. This is the set you want because that benefit is just going to be there. And the real kicker is when you lose it. You lose it when you attack from the back, or you lose it when attacking an enemy on the ground, which means you could theoretically get a lot more use out of your crits because if you're still attacking a bigger opponent, they're gonna be up longer. So as long as you don't attack them from the back, you don't attack them when they're on the ground, you're gonna keep that benefit and you're gonna get that plus 20 to crit damage. It's a fantastic set of gear and free. It's in the game, go get it. It's fantastic, but it is a late set. You will only find this if you're probably like 60 to 70% of the way in the game, you'll start finally finding those Thane pieces. Of course, you can always go find them early if you want, but yes, they are out there. You can get them for free. Our other set of free gear in this tier is the Mentor set. Increases your attack after critical hits. This is a five stack buff, 35 second duration, plus 1.2 to plus 20. Straightforward, really good. Increases your attack after crits. You stack runes that give you crits. Boom, you are going to get plus 20 attack pretty much all the time. That is fantastic. With the five piece, you're gonna get an additional increase to your speed up to plus 10. I mean, that is as straightforward as it gets. And the truth about armor sets, guys, is usually the fact that the flashiest ones are the most niche and the most nonsense ones. And the really simple and straightforward ones are the best in terms of progression. And that's exactly what we have here with the mentor set and the Thane set. Now, the real secret here is, of course, you can combine sets, a two piece here and a two piece there. That's what I do for my personal gear. We have a video about that on the channel. If you want to check it out, it's the perfect set of gear, in my opinion. It combines the two piece for the mentor, the two piece for the Thane, fits my playstyle really, really well, and it is a fantastic combination of sets and gear. Of course, we also couldn't forget about the two sets of gear that are locked behind the Ubisoft store. You can buy these, I think they're 2,000 Helix credits each. The Einhajar and the Niflheim sets, both very, very good, but as you guys know from our other videos, I'm not a huge fan when they put the best sets of things, or weapons, or anything really, behind a store. The Einhajar set increases your attack after each kill, Stacks up to three times, gives you a beefy 50 second duration, gives you up to plus 30 attack, and of course the five piece gives you a small amount of life back after three kills, 5% health restored after those three kills. That's a really good set of gear. Again, straightforward. Kill a lot of enemies, get the buff. The buff lasts for 50 seconds. My God, that's a long time. Fantastic set of gear. And finally, of course, is the Niflheim set. This is the latest set of gear that's been put in the game. Increases your critical chance after each kill. Three stacks for that, 20 second duration, plus 10 to plus 30, an additional increase to crit damage, plus 15 to plus 45. So kind of the same thing as the Einherjar in terms of the after kill effect, but we're talking about crit here. Stack all the crit, use a frost rune weapon. My God, you are going to be doing so much damage. And after testing out the uh, Niflheim set, I can confirm, yes, you do an absolute massive amount of damage with this set of gear. But again, this and the Einherjar set, both locked behind the Ubisoft store. I'm not going to say buy it. If you want to support Ubisoft, and I think they made a pretty good game, you can. These are fantastic sets of gear. They will help you immensely if you're looking for something to uh, ease the challenge of the game, but not necessary by any stretch, especially with the Thane's armor and the Mentor armor being so, so good. And there you have it. Man, I'm exhausted. That was a lot to talk about. I said I wasn't going to talk about everything, and I ended up talking about everything, but I think the armor really does deserve our time. And of course, you can always mix and match pieces of gear. I could spend hours talking about armor and different combinations of armor, how you could get the most benefits out of it. But honestly, now that you know and you can kind of see a snapshot of where I think gear falls, maybe it'll help you figure out what kind of gear you need to go hunt for. And as always, guys, if you disagree with me, that's fine. That's what video games are about. Having conversations about the things that we're passionate about. I'm passionate about video games. I know a lot of you guys are too. Let's have a conversation. Leave your comments in the section below. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me a set of gear deserves to be higher or lower in the list. And of course, guys, if you are not subscribed to the channel, hit that thumbs up. 
and that big shiny red button completely free for you, unlike some of the items on this list. And it really does help out the channel a ton. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more of these types of videos in your feed, you know what to do. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.